Hey guys, hope you're all good. I wasn't going to make a video today. Um, this is fake plastic trees, by the way, from the um, the Westworld soundtrack. Um, originally penned by um, Radiohead. Yeah, so like I say, I wasn't going to make a video today. Um, but I just had to pop out and um, I went into a... Uh, Polish convenience store and uh, I know the fella in there I quite often go in to buy my tobacco from there because they sell my brand um, which is really hard to get kind of um, organic additive free tobacco in the UK now but um, yeah when I was in the store it was, there was a couple doing kind of like their weekly shop a Polish couple kind of doing all their shopping and I love looking around stores like that, you know. I love going into kind of the, the Asian food stores and um, Indian food stores and kind of seeing all the different products and stuff. Um, but this couple, yeah, like I say, they were must have been doing like their weekly shop or something. And they were having a chat and they were kind of taking their time. And um, during those instances now, I just kind of trance out. I kind of just zone out and... Um, appreciate the time and uh yeah so when this couple had gone the guy was saying oh i'm sorry i'm sorry to keep you waiting and um i responded by saying patience is its own reward and um i love saying that because it's so true and it reminds me that um i used to be incredibly impatient um i just hate queuing i used to have to hate waiting for people um but yeah, he responded by saying, ah, do you play yoga? And I love the way he said it. And, and I said that, I said, I love the way you said, do I play yoga? Um, and I said, yeah, I guess I do play yoga. You know, some people um, tend to kind of take the game of yoga far too seriously. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so, so it kind of made me feel good. It, it gave me a bit of a reflection on um, what indeed yoga has given to me or um, what yoga's helped me to rediscover and uh, yeah it's the uh, the empty moments or the uh, yeah those moments where you can just be you know and daydream and I slip into that all the time now um, I'm kind of in a trance state most of the time as you guys may have noticed so yeah these these videos it's been quite a trip and um, all sorts has been coming out when I've been uh, just sitting down and contemplating and rambling. And uh, yeah, I've come up against some quite challenging parts of myself, you know, or uh, try to express some messages. Well, no, I'm a work in progress, you know, and, and that's kind of the, the purpose of this. And uh, I said I'd never let comments or people's opinions edit me. You know, so I'm not going to. Um, but today, um, I'd like to speak about, I'm just checking the time again. I'd like to re read you guys a little bit about um, mandalas. Well, that's a mandala. And that actually is a mandala. I know I say mandala and mandala and just me from different dimensions. So yeah, um, and this is really interesting. Um, because my life is very mandala-like. Um, and that may make sense when, when I read you this little excerpt. Um, I'm going to grab my glasses, in fact. So, mandala. This is a Hindu term for a circle. It is a kind of yantra, instrument, means or emblem in the form of a ritual geometric diagram sometimes corresponding to a specific divine attribute or some form of enchantment mantra which is thus given visual expression Kanman suggests that mandalas were first brought to Tibet from India by the great guru Palamar Sabatha in the 6th century AD and they are to be found all over the Orient, and always as a means towards contemplation and concentration, and as an aid in inducing certain mental states. 
and encouraging the spirit to move forward along its path of evolution from the biological to the geometric, from the realm of the corporeal forms to the spiritual. According to Heinrich Zimmer, mandalas are not only painted or drawn, but are also actually built in three dimensions for some festivals. One of the members of the Lamis convent in Bunabusti, Lingdaman Gondaham, described the mandala to Carl Gustav Jung as a mental image which may be built up in the imagination only by a trained Lama. He maintained that no one mandala is the same as another. All are different because each is projected image each is a projected image of the psychic condition of the author, of its author. In other words, an expression of the modification brought about by this psychic content. The, in, the traditional idea... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit flustered. Um, an expression of the modification brought by this psychic content to the traditional idea of the mandala Thus the mandala is synthesis of traditional structure plus free interpretation. Its basic components are geometric figures, counterbalanced and concentric. Hence it has been said that the mandala is always the squaring of the circle. There is quite a bit more there and I may type this up. This is from the, um, the Dictionary of Symbols. Let me get these things off. Um, yeah, so that's great. And, and um, there's a Mandela there. And, and they seem to be kind of popping up everywhere in my life. They always have. I've always been fascinated by them. Um, and like I say, my life is becoming very Mandela-like. I find that there are certain points and um, there will be an allegorical... Um, turn of events or um, a metaphorical turn of events or I will um, be reliving um, a moment again. Um, my philosopher friend from um, Oxford University actually um, gave me a new, um, a new term, a new phrase, a new idea um, the other week um, and, and it's called Deja the Q. And it's kind of like deja vu, um, but instead of seeing something again, you're actually living it again. Um, and just saying that now, that just sums it up so well. Um, I always get that feeling that I've kind of been here before, um, or I'm about to come walking in on myself. Um, and I said in yesterday's video, I think, that... Um, I certainly feel jump, jumping off points during this life that I feel like I'm overwriting the program, like I'm, um, yeah, taking authorship and, and kind of taking things in another direction. Many things like I feel like I'm getting second chances, you know. Um, and like I say, the the uh, the cycles kind of, they, they represent one another, they all reference one another. Um, like I was playing West, the Westworld soundtrack, now I love Westworld, I love that original movie, um, and uh, the, the remake of it, phenomenal, phenomenal, that I, I can't say enough about it, I could be making videos, um, beautiful, beautiful, um, philosophical, visceral, uh, art, oh, oh my God, um, amazing it sung to me it really did um but yeah they used a lot of radiohead in the soundtrack and that kind of took me in the direction to revisit radiohead which then referenced other things that were from my real oh it's um yeah it's 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 a multiverse it's, it's multi-dimensional you know um the way that kind of i my intercourse with the universe now that I breathe with the universe um, it reflects back to me um, all these kind of inspirations and kind of this um, nostalgic kind of reawakening that I seem to be going through and when I come on here and I make these videos 
you know, I'm not surprised if it doesn't make sense or if it comes across as being odd because there are no words, you know, I am absolutely gobsmacked. Um, I, I was saying to my friend earlier, I said it's, it's quite often like living in the Ludovico film from um, A Clockwork Orange, just that horrific, uh, that scene where he's getting played, I'm, I'm cured, I'm, I'm cured, like he says at the end. Just this world is just so, um, it just feels too much for me at times. And somebody suggested in the comments that I take a break. And um, the reason I'm making these videos is because I'm kind of done with it for a while, you know. And I, and I kind of want to see a before and after, you know. I, I think I said yesterday that these are going to become like my uh, Dorian Gray portrait in the attic. And these videos and this right now, um, I won't recognise this guy, you know, in, in months, years. I don't, I, I, I'm constantly changing now and uh, I'm not fitting into any kind of boxes anymore, you know, or any storylines. I also said that as well when I, when I kind of give my will away um, and I feel like I'm selling out on a very, very kind of subtle level. Um, yeah, I'm just hyper aware. You know, and uh, like I said, I'm picking up the quill again and I'm, I'm starting to write this thing again, you know, because, uh, yeah, it, it, it really does feel like you get coerced into these different kind of, or, or it does to me, it feels like I get coerced into these storylines and I kind of see where that's going and I see kind of um, how it won't benefit me, you know, and, and they generally represent um, the sins. You know, on some level, they, they, they kind of um, represent the sins. I'm either selling out to greed or gluttony or... And, and I've felt at times very big shifts when I've been kind of going through a, a test, a trial, an initiation, and kind of the... I get tempted. You know, I've seen that. And when I've kind of resisted, um, it's almost like I, I, I move through that level, you know? Um, yeah. So, so it is like a game, you know. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it there today. I've, I feel good about that little ramble, that little um, thing. And um, yeah, I just want to share with you. Yes, I play yoga. That, that was great. That really made me smile. And it made me smile too, realising that I've got a lot more patience nowadays. I also went on to say, I'm going to keep this under 15 minutes, um, that most of the, um, the realist yogis that I meet um, they've come from such a hectic kind of background, you know, they're all, um, they're all reprobates, you know, they're all party animals, or they're all kind of, um, yeah, very, very imbalanced before they took up yoga, and, um, yeah, it's nice seeing that, that evolution, you know, it's nice now that I'm able to pass on yoga, and that's kind of, this is my yoga, you know, um, I, I get very, very, frustrated at kind of how um, certain kind of uh, yoga teachers present themselves and their class. It's cool, there is a place for that, you know, but when people are first starting off with yoga, they, I don't know, I, I was really blessed. I mean, my first yoga teacher is still one of my, well, she is my yoga teacher. Um, she, she was just phenomenal, man. She was just kind of, just like a female version of me. You know, but she would, she, yeah, she'd come through a lot and you could tell, you know, I hope you can tell I've come through a lot. I hope you can tell that I'm going through a lot. Um, but anyway, on that note, um, lots of love, namaste, and um, I will catch you next time or maybe in another dimension.